Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Lola Lewis. Good evening. It's good to see you, Lola Lewis. Good evening. Praise God. La Quinta Monique. Thank God for you. Sister Harris. Uh, Sister Johnson. Annette Johnson. Thank God for all of you tonight. Uh, it is a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing, Miss Beverly, to see all of you tonight. Sister Florel. Praise God for you. And Elder Stokes. Uh, good evening to you and uh, Sister Latoya Hardy, uh, Laura Overton from Detroit, Michigan. Blessing to you and your mother. Uh, we praise God for all of you tonight. Uh, Charlene and Miss Marion and Mr. Brownie. Uh, thank you, Sister Lucille. Thank God for you, Sister Priscilla Billiot. Uh We're just excited to see all of you tonight. Sister Arby Banks, good evening to you and Deacon Winston Thomas. Uh, praise God, Sister Mag, Jacqueline Mag. Uh, please share with family and friends. But Marlon, my friend, Marlon of friends. Good to see you, sir. Uh, Shakit Aseola Ashby, period. Sister Darcy, good evening to you. Good evening to you, and thank God for you. Uh, Princess, uh, good evening to you, and, and Sister Claudette. Uh, uh, Hughes Field, and Shanita Kennedy Francis, and, and all of you, but Ernest Jones. Make sure that you share it with your family and your friends. Let them know that in about a minute, Sister Barbara Davis, we'll be going on live. Amen. And I thank God for all of you. Sister Leslie Dawson Franklin and uh, Reverend Chris, Sister Sylvia DePlace, thank God for all of you for being with us tonight. Evelyn Bentley, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank God for all of you. Sister Othello, thank God for all of you. I praise God. I thank God for all of you just taking the time tonight. Alexis, good evening. My daughter-in-law, Alexis, good evening to you and your husband, Marlon. Amen. Uh, Sister, uh, Sister Deborah William, good evening to you. Gwendolyn Silve. Uh, guess what? It is 7 p.m. I just need you, wherever you are, just to bow for a moment of prayer. Thank you, Brother Mike Eugene. Uh, God, our Father, we do come before thy holy presence. As always, we recognize and reverence you as the only living and true God. Lord God, we look to you, Master, because truly you are the author and finisher of our fate. We thank you for the healing of our bodies, our mind, our finances. We thank you for our right now moments. Now, Lord God, I ask a special blessing on your people tonight. Lord God, bless them real good, Master, whatever they stand in need of. Keep the windows of heaven open that they can receive blessing after blessing after blessing. And then, Lord God, bless your word tonight. Let us, Lord God, glean something from your word that will make us better stewards, better Christians, Lord God, better disciples. So we love you, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise your name. As always, it's in the mighty, wonderful, and precious name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Thank God for you, Sister Anita. Uh, Sister King and Sister Adrell, uh, go with me to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 19 tonight, Revelation chapter 19, Sister Jupiter, Revelation chapter 19, Sister Anita Harris, uh, we're, we're picking back up, we're almost finished, we're almost finished in this great book, we've been in this book a long time, bless you Sister Mary Williams, and listen, let me say this, uh, Sister Mary did an awesome job with the Sunday School lesson uh, that's why it's important that we uh, get involved with the Sunday School lesson. I just want to publicly commend her on a great job tonight. Uh, Sister Amelia Bank, we're still praying your strength. Sister Steele, Sister Lanny Osceola, we're in Revelation chapter 19. Make sure you have your Bibles, your iPhone, your iPad, uh, your pen, your paper, whatever you need, Sister Betty Alcala, because like I always share with you, uh, it's so important that we not only hear what God is saying, Sister Kathleen Hughes Pride, but it's also important that we see what God is saying, and we can see it through the Word of God tonight. So I pray I'll give you a minute to get your Bible, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever you need, Justine Mason, to make sure that you are seeing what God is saying. Bless your brother, Eddie Williams. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, that's where we are tonight, Revelation chapter 19. And what we're talking about Tonight is the voices of victory, the voices of victory. Sister Kendall Augustine, Sister Aisha, uh, call Aisha Steele, that's what we're talking about tonight, the voices of victory. Now, uh, Sister Donna Stevenson, when you hear uh, 
when you talk about voices, Sister Sylvia Lewis, we talk about voices. Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, there's always two types of voices. Uh, Satika battle. Uh, when whenever we're 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 losing a battle, Brother Kevin Isaac, there's a sound we make. The voice is a is a is a voice of despair, of despondent. Uh, the voice is not as loud. It's not as clear. It's not as confident when we're talking about uh, a voice. God bless you, Sister Lorna McCollum. Good to see you, Lorna. And so we talk about that. We talk about the voice. Whenever you've been defeated uh, in a battle or uh, defeated in something in life, Sister Deborah Mack, the voice is not as powerful. Okay, we we sometimes we talk just above a whisper. Okay, so the Courtney Polite. But when we get the victory, oh my goodness, when we get the victory, uh, then there's a sound of, of of excitement. There's a sound of celebration. Our voices picks up and it carries. It's almost like if if, if your favorite team, uh, Perry Cosi, Deacon Cosi, your favorite team uh, scores a touchdown or, or last minute touchdown and win the game. Then that voice is loud. It, it, it's, 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 it's where it's piercing because it's a sign of victory. It's a voice of victory, and we're happy. But what happens? What happens in the life of the Christian when when we get the victory? And we know we have the victory at the Clarice Hampton because as I've been sharing with us for the last couple of weeks, as we matriculate to this book of Revelation and we look at all what took place as the Renell Haggins and how the disciples had to go through much and. And uh, uh, even through the uh, tribulations of Trinity August Augustus and Sister Rynell Brooks, we see all of that. But what happens is tonight we're going to see what happens when when the saints get the victory. When we know we got the victory. And tonight, tonight you have to know, no matter what you're going through, Sister Anna H. A. N. Whatever we're going through, we have to know that when it's all said and done, we have the victory. We have the victory. So I'm asking you the question, do you have your voice of victory on tonight? Do you have your voice of victory? Or do you have your voice of despair or defeat? Because when it comes down to Almighty God, when it comes down to Jesus Christ, when it comes down to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, then our voice should be a voice of victory. It should not be a voice of despondent or despair, Sister Samantha McKnight Williams. So, so we have the victory. I want everybody to know tonight, we have the victory. I want you to hear me tonight. We have the victory over everything. Everything. Because when Jesus got up, and Jesus got up that third day morning, Sister Gilda Wagner, he had all power in his hand. And what he did, Sister Allison, he, he transferred that power to us. And so now we have the victory over, over debt, hell, and the grave. We don't have to worry about that. You know, we know physically this body is going to go back to the dust. We already know that. But the thing is, if there's a comma. Oh, somebody hear me good tonight. When we die on this side of life, there's a comma, not a period. Because we just continue living on the other side. That's something to get excited about. And so I want you tonight, tonight to know that you have the victory. We have the victory, okay? Now, three things we're going to look at tonight, uh, because these saints here in heaven, they're, they're excited. These, when we look at this lesson here, these saints are in heaven, and they have the voice of victory, the voice of victory, because, you know, uh, how we say, uh, 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 where, the, where the wicked shall cease from troubling, and the weary shall be at rest, and every day will be hard and hard and never goodbye. That's what they're rejoicing about. So, so when I look at the points of consideration tonight, uh, we're going to look at uh, rejoicing for the Savior. Rejoicing for the Savior. Rejoicing for the Savior. That's verse number one. Rejoicing for the Savior. Then we're going to look at revenge on the sinners. Revenge on the sinners, comma green. Revenge on the on the sinners. And Sister Rita Smith, that's going to be on verse, verses 2 and 3. And then, Elder Stoke, we're going to close this lesson out. And Brother Chris Pryor will let the redeemed saints. The redeemed saints. And that's going to be verses 4 through 10. So as we look at this lesson tonight, we're going to look at, uh, we're talking about voices of victory. We're going to see rejoicing for the Savior, revenge on the sinners, and Sister Lori Bentley, we're going to see redeemed saints.
Okay, so I pray you're ready. I pray you have your Bible, your iPhone, your iPad. You know, I'm a, Brother Oscar Ben, I thank God for you, all of you listening to me, Sister Marga Jam, but I really would appreciate it if you can look at that word for yourself. See what happened when you see that word for yourself and you see it in print, you can come back and somebody asks you about this book of Revelation, somebody asks you about this lesson, you can say, I saw it for myself. You know, it's not so much what the pastor say, what the reverend say, but I saw it for myself. So that's why I put a lot of emphasis, Sister Michelle Lloyd, on having a Bible and an iPhone, an iPad, whatever you're using to see the Word of God, okay? So let's look at Revelation chapter 19. We're talking about the voices of victory, okay? I'm going to begin at verse number one, verse number one, verse number one. Look what it says. And after these things, after what things? After what things? After what things? Uh, what did what he say after these things? What happened when it just transpired, when, when Babylon had fallen? We just talked about it last week. Babylon has fallen, this, this religious system, this, this economic system that the Antichrist, Sister Amelia Banks, has set up. Uh, how he was deceiving people and getting people to bow down to the statue and the golden image and all those things and take the mark of the beast. And, and so after all of that, and Babylon now had fallen and they couldn't get up. We talked about that last week because God, Sister Crystal Light, knocked it down. And when God knocked you down, only God can pick you back up. And so now this system, this religious system, this economic system that the Antichrist thought was untouchable, he, he, what he failed to realize, we might not can touch it, but there is one who can touch everything. Oh, my goodness. And what he did, he destroyed Babylon. And so now he knocked down Satan's kingdom. He knocked down the Antichrist kingdom. And so that's why I said after these things, after Babylon had fallen, after the last uh, 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 physical enemy that we uh, we have to face or see. And remember, uh, I want to share it also. This book of Revelation is not written in chronological order. Sometimes it jumps. Sometimes it moves. It, you know, it's fluid. It moves different places. So, so I want you to understand that, Sister Valerie Minor. But here, this is what happened after Sister Lynn Benjamin, after Babylon had fallen. And so he said, after these things, Revelation chapter 19, verse 1, after these things, I heard a great voice. Of much people in heaven, listen to this, saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Look at this. Look, look what they give God. Look at look at the rejoice for the Savior. They're giving God all these accolades and, 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 and building them up and, and, and letting them know how they feel about him. Now, remember, they're in heaven. They're in heaven, and so they're rejoicing. And, and what they're doing, you say, the great voice of much people in heaven, because everybody in heaven, listen, everybody in heaven is going to rejoice. Everybody in heaven is going to rejoice. So they're rejoicing. They're not looking uh, at people rejoice. Everybody in heaven is rejoicing because they're looking at where they came from. They're looking at what God is doing for them and where God is taking them. And so what they're doing now, they're, they're being blessed. They're sitting at the master's feet and they're being blessed, Deacon Melvin Bianca. So now what they're doing, they're rejoicing. Oh my goodness. They're rejoicing. They're rejoicing. Oh, oh my goodness. Somebody put joy right there. Somebody put joy right there. There's joy right there, says Charlene Bush. There's joy in heaven. There's joy in heaven. And, and you know, we say this joy I have, the, the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. That's the kind of joy we're supposed to have when we think about Jesus. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. See, that's supposed to be a joy when, when I know he picked me up in the morning and he wakes me up in the morning. He, 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 he starts me on my way. He picked me up when I'm down. He makes ways out of no ways. He, he makes sure there's food on my table and clothes on my back. Those are the things like this that give us joy on this side. But think about when we're on the other side, Don, yet. Think about when we're on the other side. There's no need for none of these things we have because why did we'll be blessed over and over and over. And every day with Jesus is better than the day before. So Brother Jasper, Brother Byron Jasper, they're excited. There's joy in heaven. Oh, my goodness. There's joy in heaven. The Bible says, heard, John said, I heard a great voice of many, of much people. Would you be making noise if you was in heaven? Would you be rejoicing or would you just be there quiet like we do on Sunday, Miss Ben, like some people do on Sunday? Would you be quiet or would you have something to praise God for? Well, can you say, my soul look back and wonder how I got over? Can you look back and see where God has brought you from, Brother Damon Stokes? Sometimes we have to do that. We have to look back and see where God has taken us from. And then that put joy in our heart. That put joy in our heart. And so this, tonight, there's joy in heaven because the, there's a great voice of much people in heaven saying hallelujah 
salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord Christ this our God. It, it, it has to be personal. It, it has to be personal. It, it has to be personal. He said right here, says the Valley Mind, he said uh, unto the Lord our God. The question goes out tonight, who is your God? Who is your God? Can you rejoice over the God of heaven and earth? Can you rejoice over the God who sits Dolly Frederick, who does all things well? Can you rejoice over the God who make ways out of no way? Can you rejoice over the God who say, I'll fight your battle. Uh, no good thing will I withhold from you. Can you rejoice over that? Who is your God? Because they're rejoicing and they have, there's joy in heaven because this is personal. This is personal. This is personal. And, and why this? Can't nobody tell it like you? Nobody can tell your story like you. And right now, these people are so excited because they understand Babylon has fallen, that, that, that deceiver, that antichrist, that false prophet, that, or that religious system is set up, that economic system is set up. If you want to eat or, or, or buy or sell, you got to take this mark. That the economic system is fallen or the religious system telling you got to bow down to this, to this image of the beast. All that is fallen. God has taken care of that, okay? God has taken care of that, but damn was stoked in Colorado. I see you. Brother Greg Misano, look what he said. They say, hallelujah. And hallelujah, hear, hear me good people of God. Hallelujah is the highest praise. That is the highest praise. That is the praise that only God deserves. That is the highest praise. Nobody else. Oh my goodness. Somebody hear me good. Put your ears on, Sister Melanie Sylvester. Put your ears on. Nobody else deserves a hallelujah except God. Quote me on that. Nobody deserves the Gwendolyn seal. A hallelujah besides God. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your brother, not your sister, not your children, not your job, not your boss. Nobody deserves a hallelujah besides God, besides Jesus Christ, however you want to put it. And so here he said, hallelujah, the highest praise, the highest praise for the highest God, okay? Then he says, salvation, okay? Salvation, because why this? We understand we are saved. We are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we only are saved, came to somebody, through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we shout hallelujah, Jacqueline Britton, because the blood of Jesus has done what nothing else could do. What could wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Andre Sincere, God bless you, my cousin. I hope your husband doing well also. Sister Valerie, I Lord bless you too. Nothing, Sister Thelma, my daughter, but the blood of Jesus Christ. So he talked about salvation. Then he said, and glory, glory. You know what glory is? Glory, Sister Yolanda, is the splendor, uh, the holiness, and the majesty of Almighty God. It's, it's, it's the majesty of God. You know, uh, Sister Marion Cola, when, 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 when if, if Barack Obama or, or Joe Biden was, would walk in the door right now, we would, we would uh, respect them because why this, of who they are and what they represent. And just think about that because of who they are and what they represent. But in four years, if they don't get reelected, they are no longer president. Okay? But God, oh, somebody going to catch this. But God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's going to always be God. From the beginning of time, he was God. And guess what? Once we go, there will never be an end of time as we know it. He's going to always be God. So to give God glory, this, this splendor, this holiness, this majesty because of God, then they say right in power. Oh, look at these words they use. Power, power. And you understand them? Jesus said, I have all power in my hand. Jesus has the power to change circumstances and situations. Whatever your circumstances tonight, hear me good, people of God. Sister Dina Lewis William, hear me good. Whatever your circumstance or situation is, Sister Crystal Light, I want you to know tonight that Jesus told me to tell you, Rosemary Richardson, that why he can change your situation. He can change it. He can change it right now. Uh, Sister Chong, Chong Willis and Othello Hughes. He can change your situation because why does he have the power to do it? He has the power, Sister Cassandra Reddick Miller, to change circumstances and situations. Only Jesus can do that. And so now in his first verse, they, 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 they're rejoicing for the Savior because they realize what God has done for them through Jesus Christ. They realize they couldn't do it themselves. They realize if it had not been for the Lord on their side, where would they be? So what they're doing, they're rejoicing. There's joy in heaven. And why this? Verse 2, for true and righteous are his judgments. Catch this now. For true and righteous are his judgments. 
For he had judged the great whore, talking about Babylon, huh? he had judged the great whore of Babylon, which did corrupt the earth with a fornication and had avenged the blood of his servants at our hand because, uh, like I said, they was beheading people, they was boiling people in oil, they was feeding them to the lions, they was feeding them to dogs, they was they was uh, stretching them, stretching their arms so wide till they knock it out of socket. They were doing everything to make people take that mark. A lot of people got saved after the rapture. A lot of people got saved after the rapture. You mean good people? They got saved after the rapture. And what happened just because they got saved after the rapture does not mean they didn't have to go through hard trials or tribulation. They still have to go through something. Because if they would have been in the number in that rapture, they would have to go through that. But they want to be in that number that John saw. That's why I tell people, you don't want to be in that number that John saw. You don't want to be in that number because that's the number going through hard trials and tribulation. You want to be raptured out of here. Uh, the, the choir sang that song Sunday. Uh, I want to be caught up. Caught up in the rapture. I got excited when they were singing that. Caught up in the rapture. And that's what we want. We want to be caught up, Monique Bellamy. We want to be caught up in the rapture. But some people are still going to, going to miss the rapture, but they're going to get saved after the rapture during the tribulation. But yet they're still going to be beheaded and, 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 and going to suffer all kind of things, okay? And so here he's saying God will get revenge or he will avenge the blood of his servants who died at the hand of the Antichrist who died at the hand of the false prophet. God will avenge that, or get revenge on the sinners, okay? Then they say, and again they say, hallelujah, and a smoke rolls up forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders, why is this now? And the four and twenty elders, the twenty-four elders, they say that, they, they, you know, they say that's the uh, twelve apostles and the twelve uh, uh, tribe of Israel. That's what they say, okay? I'm just going to say what I've read, okay? That's the twenty-four elders. They say that the twenty-four elders and the four beasts fell down. They fell down. They fell down. They fell down. Why like this? And worship God that sat on the throne saying, amen. Here it is again. Hallelujah. Now, now I want you to understand what they did. The Bible says... They worship. Somebody said, put worship right there. They worship. They worship. They worship. They worship. They worship God. Okay. They Darlene Lewis. They worship God. And I want you to understand something. We have to learn to worship God. We have to learn to worship God. We have to learn to just lift up holy hands and worship Him and, and just thank Him for all that He's doing for us. See, our problem is we don't worship God enough. We don't. Don't you know why this? Uh, God, if, if you worship him uh, every day, uh, God will bless you every day. The Bible says uh, in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit. Oh, my goodness. And they that worship him must worship him, Sister Audrey Banks, in spirit and in truth. What does that mean, Sister Rita Miss Smith and Sister Renelle Hagen? That means you can't fake it. You can't fake it. Because God knows, Sister Melody, God knows what comes from your heart and God knows what comes from your lips. So when God looking for true worshipers, Sister Danielle Lewis, he looking for true worshipers, true worshipers. Go read that. Go read that uh, John chapter 4 when that woman was at the well and she was talking about worshiping God at a particular place. God said, you don't know what you do. You can worship me anywhere. Anyway, not just at a well. And so we have to learn that we can't, we don't just wait for Sunday morning to worship God. We can worship God right now. You can worship God by putting the word worship up there. You can worship God by putting, uh, like what Latoya said, every day. We have to learn to worship God every day in every situation, Sister Lorna McCollum. Because guess what? He's that kind of God. The Bible says they fell down. That means they prostrate themselves before God because they realized they were not worthy to look at Almighty God because they were standing before royalty. They were standing before the man who created the heavens and the earth. They were standing before the man who could put breath in the body and take breath out of the body. That's what they was doing. And what they did, they fell down before him and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen. That means we agree with everything you've done. That means we agree with everything you do and say, brother, say, I say all of that's what amen mean. And not only did he say amen, but he said, hallelujah. We give you the highest praise, God. We give you the highest praise. Sister Sherry B. Anime, they give him the highest praise. And guess what, Sister Antoine Akala? If we could give him more, we ought to give him more. Sister Denise Ross, Jones Ross, we ought to give God all of us, all of us, all of us. You know, we, we got to stop giving God some of us. We got to give God all of us. 
We want all of him, give him all of us. And we got to ask God, Lord, let my prayers and worship be acceptable in thy sight. The Bible says right here, they, they fell down and, and worshiped God and sat on the throne saying, Amen and Hallelujah. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. And a voice came out of the throne. A voice came out. We're talking about the voices of victory. Miss Beverly, watch this. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God. Oh my goodness. Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Now they just worship him. They just worship him. Somebody gonna catch me. Somebody gonna catch it. They just got through worshiping him. Now they praise him. Now they praise him. You know, uh, I, I can't stop praising his name. I, I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. And see, that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, uh, hallelujah. You know, praise his holy name. Uh, and see, that's what it's all about. It's about giving God the praise. And then why not only uh, uh, worship him, but praising him. And it's been praise and worship of first cousins. Praise and worship of brothers and sisters. Praise and worship of husband and wives. They go together. You can't worship him without praising him, and you can't praise him without worshiping him. Now, you think I'm not? You try it. You try it. Because once you start worshiping him, you say, oh, my goodness, God, you've been so good. God, you've been so kind. All of a sudden, you're going to start running and shouting and jumping and uh, and leaping because that's what happens. That's what happens when we think about how good God has been to us. The Bible said, the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God. The question goes out, Shakit asked me, do you have anything? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Lord Lewis. Do you have anything to praise God for? Do you have anything to praise God for? Somebody put yes right there. You don't have to tell me what it is. Just put yes. Yes. Just put yes. Do we have anything? He woke you up. Yes. I've got breath in my body right now. Yes. We have so much to praise God for. Do you have anything to praise God for? Look around. That means you can still see. I got something to praise God for. I got eyes. Oh, hug yourself. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can. I still got hands to feel. I got, Oh, Lord. Shout. Hallelujah. I still got a voice. I got so much to praise God for. Family, friend, loved one. Family, friend, finances, faith. We have so much to praise God for. So the Bible says, right, he heard a voice, a voice of a, uh, uh, come out of the throne saying, praise our God. Praise our God. All ye his servants. Now, if you are his servant, you're going to praise him. If you are his servant, you're going to praise him. Now, if you're not his child, because we're servants are God's children. If you're not his child, you won't you won't worship him and you won't praise him. Because if you find it hard, oh, let me drop an anchor right here. Somebody say, oh, I'm going to drop it. Somebody say, drop it. Let me drop it. Let me drop it. Let me drop it. If you, I'm going to drop an anchor. If you have a problem praising and worshiping God, maybe you're not a child of God. If you have a problem, little Mike, giving God glory and honor and praise and worship, maybe you're not for him. Maybe you're not his child. T. Me, maybe you're not his child because any child of God don't have a problem praising God. Because when they think about it, you know, just the little things, just the little things, T. Shower, that he's doing, the little thing, not the big thing, just the little things he's doing. We're going to praise and worship him. But if you have a problem coming to church on a Sunday, and worshiping God. If you have a problem uh, waking up, thinking about damn stroke, if you have a problem and you open your eyes every morning, you got a problem worshiping, there's something wrong with you. If you got a problem when you put a fork in your hand or a spoon in your hand and you don't say, Lord, thank you, there's something wrong with you because when you say, Lord, thank you, you're praising him and you're worshiping him. Okay? And so we have to learn, Sister Judge Woods, to do that. We have to learn to do that. But if you have a problem, if you have a problem worshiping him, something wrong, because he said right here, a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants, okay? Then he said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, and that, and, and ye that fear him or reverence him, that word reverence means reverence him as the only true and living God, that means reverence him as the, as the giver of all good and perfect gift, that means reverence him, Sister April Simonet, as the one who can open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing. Uh, Cleo Warren reverence him as the sustainer of all good and perfect gifts. And when you reverence him, he said, then you, that, word, that word fear means, he said, both small and great.
That means rich and poor, black and white, because guess what? When we all get to heaven, we all the same. We down here, some of us may have more financially than others, but guess what? In the eyesight of God, we all are the same. I tell people this all the time. You can have a 10-bedroom house. Nobody's going to carry this. You can have a 10-bedroom house. You only can sleep in one bed at a time. One. I got five bedrooms in my house. Only can use one at a time. I got 10 cars. Only can use one at a time. One at a time. So it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Well, how many you have, you only can use one. But whatever God has given you, you have to learn to praise him and worship him for it. Okay? The Bible says, Darlene Lewis, listen to this. The Bible, thank you, Darlene Lewis. The rocks ain't going to cry out. No, I ain't letting the rocks cry for me. I'm going to cry myself. I'm going to shout while I got a chance. I don't need no rocks. I live in the country. I got a whole bunch of rocks down here. But I don't need a rock to cry out for me because a rock can't tell it like I can tell it. You know, the rock can't say he picked me up and turned me around. The, the rock can't say he healed my body of cancer. The rock can't say that. I can say that. I can say that because I'm a living soul. Pastor Edwards, I can say it myself, Pastor Edwards. I don't need nobody to tell the story for me. I'll tell it while I have a chance. The Bible says, verse 6, And I heard, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. Listen to this. Now, he just said earlier, he talked about... Uh, uh, a great uh, bunch of people, much people in heaven. Then he come back, a voice of a great multitude, multitude, Tracy Williams. Then he said, and as the voice of many waters, that word many waters means many people. That's all it means, many people. And he said, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, hallelujah again. Here it is. For the Lord God omnipotent, oh my goodness, he ran it. Omnipotent, I mean all power, all power. Put somebody put power right there. Put power. Put power. Omnipotent. I mean, he has all power. Oh my goodness. If you could just see the power of God on display. Uh, let me help you with the power of God. When when the devil tried to, to, to take us, the power of God kept us. When when the devil tried to shut a door, the power of God, says Daniel Lewis, kept a door open. When the devil tried to kill us, Christ had the cure. Oh my goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, somebody gonna catch that. Somebody gonna catch that. Sister Amelia Banks, Miss Beverly, somebody gonna catch that. I don't care what the devil is cooking up, Sister Charm Willis. The devil is no match for the Lord we serve. That's why the Bible says he's omnipotent right here. Omnipotent. He ran it. That word ran me. He still lives. He still lives. We know, we know people say he, he died and, and some religion teach that he died and just an ordinary man. Let me tell you something. If you part of that religion, let me tell you, I feel sorry for you in that religion. Because I know for a fact that Jesus got up that third day morning with all power in his hand. And the Bible says he walked the earth from 40 days, bore the cloud, went back to heaven, and one day he's coming back to rapture the church. Oh, my goodness. But the question goes out, are you rapture ready? I know y'all get tired of hearing me say it. I know you get tired of hearing me say it, but I got to say it. Are you rapture ready? Are you ready, you know, to be raptured up? Are you ready to be caught up in the in the rapture and caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord and so shall you be with him forever, according to First Thessalonians? Are you ready for that? Because, you know, we could get ready for a whole bunch of, oh, we going on vacation. You pack our clothes. You have it in a suitcase. You're ready for that. Oh, we got to go to the grocery store. You got you ready. You make your list. You're ready for that. We got to go to the mall and do some shopping. You're ready for that. You put your clothes on. You get your cup. You're ready for that. But are you ready for the rapture? Sister Sylvia Lewis, I'm asking the question. Sister Lorna, are we ready for the rapture? Gwendolyn Seal, Michelle Lloyd, are we ready for the rapture? Because the thing about it, we can plan a vacation. We can plan going to the store. We can plan going shopping. But let me tell you something. You don't know when a rapture is going to take place. It might take place while we're on this line right now, while we're talking, while we're teaching, while we're listening. It might take place tomorrow morning. You never know when Christ is coming back. But when he comes back, are you ready when he comes back? I'm going to tell you like I used to tell my children when they was young. My kids are grown men right now. When they missed that school bus, I had to take them to the school. I said, what happened? Oh, Paul, oh, Dad, we wasn't ready. It ain't about, you know that bus was coming? You know it was coming. It might be a minute early, a minute late, but you know it was coming. It's not about getting ready. It's about being ready. And Christ is saying, all this stuff going on in the world, there's wars and, and rumors of wars and these, these sickness and disease and COVID and COVID-19 and Delta crime and Delta crime, COVID, another one coming up. And, and now there's war in Russia. It might come over here. God is saying to Jesus Christ, I'm giving you warnings. 
The light is flashing yellow. It's not green. It's not red. It's flashing yellow. It's a warning sign to let you know my return is soon. But the question is, are we ready for the rapture? It's still, are we ready? Dr. Kevin Gabriel, bless you, sir. Congratulations, Dr. Kevin Gabriel, pastor elect of the Israelite Baptist Church of Bell Chase. I know he's going to do a great job. Let's continue to pray for Reverend Kevin Gabriel and his wife. He's going to do great work over there. So, but the question goes, are we rapture ready? If you're not, get ready right now. Get ready right now. Say, Lord, take me, uh, clean my mind, clean my heart. Lord, I want to be ready. I want to be caught up, caught up in the rapture. Let me finish this lesson. Let me get this lesson. I'm getting beside myself. The Bible says right there, verse 6, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude. That's a lot of people. And as the voice of many waters and a voice of many thundering, saying, Hallelujah. You know, so much noise that you couldn't figure out what they were saying. Everybody just saying that, saying, that, Oh, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Everybody, what everybody's saying. And for the Lord God omnipotent reigning because he's on the throne. He, he's in his right place. That's where he's at. Then it comes verse 7. Let us be glad. Oh, my goodness. Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us be glad and and rejoice and give honor to him. Let us be glad, Denise Williams. Let us be glad, Daniel Lewis. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to God, to Jesus Christ. For the marriage, here it is, of the Lamb is come. Oh, and his wife has made herself ready. Now, we talk about the Lamb. That's Jesus Christ. We got to give honor to him. He is the Lamb. Jesus Christ is the Lamb. But the bride, the bride, the bride or the wife that's us, okay? Because whenever the Bible talks about the church, it talks about it in, in, a, in a sense of the bride or woman. And what he's saying right here, he's saying we have to, because the wife had made herself ready. She wasn't getting ready. She had made herself ready. Now, understand this. Whenever there's a wedding, it's a time of celebration. Whenever there's a wedding, it's a time of celebration. And the Bible says we have to get honor to God, okay? For the marriage of the Lamb is come. It's now. It's time for the marriage to take place. It's time for us to stand before Almighty God. Somebody catch this. Somebody catch this. It's time for us to stand before Almighty God because we have made ourselves ready. We wasn't, we wasn't getting ready. We were ready when the rapture came. That's what he's talking about. And why is it? Because we were ready when the rapture came. Now, right here, at the marriage of the bride, at the marriage of the wife, what he's saying is, we're going to stand before Almighty God. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's going to get excited here. We're going to stand before Almighty God. And this is when God is going to give his children their rewards. That's when he's going to tell us, servant of God, well done. Pastor Edwards, uh, Sister Sharon Brown, Servant of God, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Monique Bellamy, now I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy. That's when we're going to hear him say that. Servant of God, well done. Because now this is the wedding feast, the marriage feast. And we are now being prepared to be with our, 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 our groom forever. Forever, because uh, I, I don't want to go too far in the lesson, but he's going to show you about the new heaven, new earth, and all that stuff. I don't want to get too far ahead, because I just want to stay right here. But this is when we're going to hear him say, servant of God, well done. Because the marriage, the marriage is taking place right now. And you know, that Sister Ruby Smith, when, when the marriage takes place, when the marriage takes place in the church, that when the, the, uh, the preacher said, do you take him for better, for worse, for richer or poor? And then he asked her the same, the same question. And he said, I do, I do, I do. Then he said, now I pronounce you man and wife. It, and now it's official. It's official, okay? And so now you write this, sign the certificate. And God is saying, listen, I'm going to sign it in blood. I'm going to sign the blood. Thank you, Pastor. That was one, one groom with many brides. I like that. I like that. I like that. One groom, many brides. Thank you, sir. Oh, Miss Ben, I'm redeemed too. I'm washing the blood of the lamb. And I'm ready for the wedding. I'm ready. You know, we get excited for weddings. Now, why this verse? I got to get out of here, y'all. Got to get out of here. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and white. White is a sign of purity. That's what white means. It's a sign of purity. Know what that means? Listen to me, good people of God. Listen to what it means. Somebody put white. Somebody put white right there. Somebody put white. That means, that means, that means God is not looking at our dirty past. Mm, somebody going to catch that. 
God is not looking at all the mistakes of the past because remember now, Jesus has already died for that. He died for that. He made it, he made it possible that we have the right to the tree of life. But we're going to stand before Almighty God. Oh my goodness, like I always tell people, we're going to be a bloody mess, Hannah Miranda. We're going to be a bloody mess because we're going to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But our outer garments are going to be white as snow, pure white, pure white. And God is going to see us pure. He's going to see our holiness, our purity. He's going to see us without flaws, without blemish, without wrinkle. We're going to be Excellent. And let me tell you something. I don't care. Somebody might laugh or joke. I don't care how ugly she is. I've never seen an ugly bride. Something about putting that white dress on and, and, and coming on that aisle, Sister Lisa Doucet. I've never seen an ugly bride. Never seen an ugly bride. Never, 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 never. Never seen an ugly bride. It's just something about that day, that event, and those clothes that just give her an added beauty. And God is saying, I'm going to look at you in the beauty of holiness. And you're going to be beautiful to me. And he said, I'm not going to look at your past, as Jocelyn Toulouse. He said, I'm going to look at you right now. You're going to be a bloody mess because inside that white garment, you're going to be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. But on the outside, you're going to be pure and holy and righteous. Oh, my goodness. That's what it says right here. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, the best linen, the best linen, and clean and white for... For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And we are saints. We are saints. I, I don't know if you heard me say it. I'm going to say it again. To the Karen B. Rams, I'm going to say it again. You don't have to wait till you die to be a saint. The moment, the very moment we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the very moment we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, that God has raised Jesus from the dead because at that moment we are saved. At that point, at that point, we become saints. That means we are sanctified. We are set apart. It doesn't mean we won't make mistakes. It doesn't mean we won't do some wrong things or have some bad thoughts. And we're going to have that because we are in our human state. Okay? But listen, the moment we accept Christ, we are saints. The word saint does not mean sinless. It does not mean sinless. It means we are set apart for the master's work. That's what the word saint means. We are set apart, Jacqueline Britton, for the master's work. And don't we should never, sit together away, let people put us in a box or say what we should or shouldn't do. Listen, as long as Sister Andre says, if God is on your side, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. And so our job is to always confess and repent to Almighty God. But the moment you accept Jesus Christ, you are a saint. How do I know that? How do I know that? Let me give it to you. Because somebody looking at me like, they don't believe me. They don't believe me. I want you to read your Bible. And when Paul, look at Paul's writing. Paul to the church at Rome, to the saints at Rome, to the saints at Colossus, to the saints at Philippi, to the saints at Thessalonica. He don't call them sinners. You don't call them, Paul calls them saints because Christ called them saints. When, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are no longer sinners. A sinner, a sinner in biblical definition. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth here. You're lying, I'm telling the truth. Somebody said, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. A sinner, a sinner in biblical uh, understanding, in biblical terms, in biblical definition, a sinner is a person who has never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's a sinner. A person who have never openly or publicly confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's a sinner. The moment we accept Christ as Lord and Savior, and I'm talking from the heart. I'm, I'm talking just going in that water to be in that water. I'm talking about the moment we confess Christ and believe Christ, then we are considered saints. Sanctified, set apart for the master's work. I know I'm telling the truth right there. I know I'm telling the truth right there. I can, I can shout hallelujah right there. I can shout hallelujah. Boy, I wish I was, I wish somebody was teaching that to me like I'm teaching it to y'all. Oh my goodness. I'll be so excited. Somebody said, teach, see, teach, teach, teach it, teach it. Tell the truth. Do something. Let me get through this lesson. I'm, 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 I'm finished now. The Bible says, reverse it again. And to her was granted that she should be a red and fine linen, fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints, okay? And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called 
unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed. We are blessed. I'm with the redeemed saints. We are blessed, Sister Lorna. Sister Thelma Dawson. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. If God said it, why are we allowing man to tell us something different? We are blessed. We are blessed to be called a child of the king. We are blessed to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. We are blessed to know Jesus Christ is on our side. We are blessed to know that Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to save those who was well. I came to save those who were sick. Because we all have a sickness. We all have a, a sin sickness. That's why we come to Jesus just as we are. Weary, worn, and sad. But we find in him a resting place. He makes us glad. And you have to understand something tonight. That we are saints. We are set apart. And the Bible says we are blessed when we are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. That means that, oh my goodness. That means when we stand before God. We don't have to hear him say, depart from me. Because those who are not redeemed. Those who have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, Brother Sintel Osceola, those who have never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will not be invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, because everybody, everybody ain't going to that marriage. Everybody ain't going to that. Only the pure in heart, only the believers in Christ, the rest of them, the unbeliever, will hear him say, I made you, but I know you're not. It's almost like somebody, we having a, a, a wedding, and it's only, oh, catch okay, this somebody. Catch it in the spirit. We having a wedding, Sister Hannah Miranda, uh, Miranda and Sister Allison Jasper and Lucille. We having a wedding, and it's only for family. It's only for family. And here come this outsider. Come and crash our wedding. But my friends, here come this outsider. No blood relative, not related at all. We don't know him. He don't know us. He come crashing the wedding. Guess what? That's what God is saying. God is saying, there are going to be some who don't have the same DNA we have because they don't have my blood. There are going to be some who's not my children by recreation. I created them, but not recreated, not born. I'm sorry, by re regeneration. I'm sorry, regeneration because they haven't been born again. There are going to be some, they're going to look for me, but we don't know them. And so why this? Because it's only a family affair. It's only a family affair because only the children of God are going to be invited to their wedding. Those who are not children of God, who have not blood relative, have the blood of Jesus Christ on them, he going to say, I made you, but I know you're not. Then he going to say, depart from me into everlasting fire. That's what it's saying right here. That's what it's saying right here. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage. Because Christ has found your, 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 your life, your prayers, your confession, your repentance. He has found it acceptable. And now what he has done, he has given you an invitation to be in heaven forever. Oh my goodness. Somebody put forever, 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 forever. And he said, these are the true sayings of God. The true sayings of God. Last verse, last verse, verse, nine, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, to worship this angel. That's what John did. John said, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it now. Don't worship me. I am thy fellow servant. Don't worship me. Don't, I don't deserve any praise, any honor, any glory. I don't deserve that. That's what he's saying. He said, Boy, and he said, And I am of thy fellow servant and of thy brother that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I have the testimony because this is what God has told me. This is what I've seen for myself. This is what I know for myself. And why this people of God, what that angel is saying, you can't make me doubt him. Oh my goodness. Because I know too much about him. Oh, can somebody say that? Somebody, can somebody say that? You can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about it. Now the angel saying right here. He said, For I have the testimony of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Then he said, Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit of truth. It's the spirit of what's going to happen. It's the spirit of what God has said is going to happen. And if God said it, it's going to come to pass. Oh my goodness. So thank God for, for all of you as we went over this lesson. The voices of victory. I'm hoping somebody can shout tonight. Somebody can shout. Somebody can just put shout on that on that right there. Just right shout. Because we talk about the voice of victory. We can shout. Because guess what? Tonight, 
Our bodies have been healed. Tonight we have been delivered from, from sickness and disease. Tonight we have, we have the, door, the windows of opportunity open in our life. Tonight God is fighting our battles. Tonight God is making our enemies our footstool. Tonight the Lord is our shepherd. Tonight no weapon form against us shall prosper. Can you shout for that? Can you shout for that? That's shouting stuff. Cause look, you have to you have to understand something. The only way the walls of Jericho was going to come down, and oh my goodness, I'm gonna teach that lesson again one day. The only way that walls of Jericho was going to come down, it wasn't. He told them to march seven times that last day. But guess what? They could have marched all they wanted if they wasn't obedient enough to shout. That wall would have never come down. They could walk ten times, twenty times, because guess what? Sometimes you got to shout your way through stuff. Sometimes you got to shout your walls down. Sometimes you got to shout your healing. Sometimes you got to shout your deliverance. Sometimes you got to shout your breakthrough. Sometimes you just got to shout. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You have to shout sometimes because if you want God to do something, just shout. Just put shout. Just, Lord, I need you for this. Uh, if you need God to heal your body, push shout. If you need God to protect and provide for you, just push shout. If you need God to make a way out of nowhere, push shout. If you need God to take care of your children, push shout. If you need God to be a fence all around you, push shout. If you need God to put money in your pocket, push shout. Put, put it right there. If you need God to keep a roof over your head, push shout. Don't you be ashamed to shout. If you want the devil out your life, you write shout. You have to learn to shout it out. That there's some stuff called shout. Sometimes they say you gotta shout it out. Sometimes when it comes down to spiritual uh things that they yell, we gotta shout it out. We gotta shout it out, shout it out, shout it out. Shout it out. Oh my goodness. I got I got excited. I mean, calm myself down. I got excited. That would happen when I get in this room. I don't know how people just sit there and don't get excited when they talk about Almighty God and what He has done for us. Oh my goodness. So God blesses and favor to all of you. Oh Lord, if you give me a few moments, I promise you I'll be out your way. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you again uh, for for just being here. Uh, as I always say, uh, uh, MB Slim, bless you, sir. And it's good. Uh, I know most of you have pastors already. I'm just appreciative of the fact that you have taken time out to be with us uh, for this uh, 45 minutes to hour lesson as we walk through this book of Revelation uh, to see what God is saying to us and for us because it's very important that we understand what this book is saying. As I always say, uh, these lessons are not for debate. They're not for arguments. Uh, this is how the Lord gives it to me. Uh, I research it. I read it. I do Charles Stanley. I do David Jeremiah. I don't take all the credit for everything. Matthew Henry. I read all these commentaries. And I, I use what it's saying, what the Holy Spirit provides for me. And I try to give it to you in the simplest form. So it's not for debate or argument. Maybe you have a pastor or a preacher or a friend. And they may preach or teach something different. That's fine. It's not for argument or debate. Don't go there and tell your pastor. Let me tell you what Reverend Giles It's not about that. It's not about that. It's for edification. It's for edification. And so that's why I thank all of you tonight uh, for just allowing me to uh, give a little biblical education to all of us. We all learn iron sharp and iron, and we learn from each other. And so I really, 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 from the bottom of my heart, appreciate all of you tonight. And you're always with us every week. So God bless and favor to you. Uh, give me a few moments. I want to pray for you. 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 So please give me a few moments. I want to pray for you. I want to ask God to just come in your life. And you know what you need. Okay? I want to pray for you. Okay? Uh, we're going to... I want us... To, uh, before we go to prayer, pray for Miss Eva LaFrance. Pray for Miss Eva on the passing of her daughter, Audrey. Audrey was a, a faithful member of Bethlehem. Audrey was a faithful member of Bethlehem. Audrey was uh, always at Bible. When we was meeting in, in the sanctuary for Bible class, Audrey was there every Thursday. When we were meeting in the sanctuary on Wednesdays during the uh, 11 o'clock hour for our Sunday school lessons, she was there every Wednesday for 11 o'clock. So she was there for Bible class on Wednesdays and on Thursdays. She was there on Sunday mornings. And, and so she passed last night. So please keep Miss Eva and, and, that, and that Miller and Moye family and the friends family in your prayers. Continue to pray for them. Uh, we, she's going to be... Uh, greatly missed by Bethlehem. I, I'm not ashamed to say that. She's going to be greatly missed. And I miss her already. Just that little smile, the funny laugh she had. She's going to be missed. And also pray for Sister Lillian Norsis. Uh, on the path of her husband Eugene, they're going to funeralize uh, Sister Lillian Norsis' husband on Saturday. 
uh, at the St. Pat, not St. St. Thomas Catholic Church in Point La Hatch for 11 o'clock. And Sister Lillian also was very faithful to Bethlehem. She would go to the Catholic Church and she would always come to Bethlehem every Sunday morning. And so we want to just be there with her on Saturday, just want to provide some comfort. Uh, if the Lord allowed me, I'll be, I'm going to go there and just show uh, some love and comfort and let them know that God is able. And so continue to pray for Miss Eva and Sister Lillian on the path of their loved ones. And then as we go to God in prayer, remember Sister Danielle Lewis, uh, Brother Chris Pride, we're praying for Brother Bernard Williams Sr., Sister Trina Rodriguez, we're praying for Brother Michael Eugene, uh, Sister Diane Santiago, uh, Sister Gloria Rowe, Sister Uriel B. Enemy, Sister Elnora Silve, uh, Steve Francis, Joseph Lenaris, uh, uh, Brother Brian Keith Allen, we're praying for Chance Glover. We're also praying for Anthony Douglas, uh, as well as Amelia Banks, uh, Sister Carrie Miller, Sister Willie Lee Cargo, uh, Brother Sam Johnson, and Sister Deborah Williams. We want to offer prayers for them. And I want to pray for all of you, God's children. Now, this is what I always ask the church to do during our prayer hours. I'm going to ask us to begin tonight as we get to close. If there's any uh, part of your body that's giving you issues uh, from head to toe, you know, whatever it may be, I don't know, from head to toe, if it's giving you issues, if it's giving you problems, if it's keeping you up at night, if it doesn't feel well, if it doesn't feel right, and, and you know your body better than anyone else except Jesus Christ, I'm asking you right now to touch it. Just touch it. If it's just if your stomach, your chest, your eyes, your ears, whatever, just touch it. And I believe in the transferring and transforming power of Jesus Christ. I believe that uh, there's power in prayer. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. Thank you, Sister Lona, for being honest. We're going to pray for that. And the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail it much. But you have to allow God to do it. Because by yourself, you cannot do it. You have to give it to him. And say, Lord, this is what I need you to do. Now, we're in different locations, different vicinities. But we're going to touch and agree spiritually. Because I believe if we pray in sincerity, and we ask God to intervene, whether it's our family, our finance, our faith, or whatever it may be, and we believe, if we come to God in prayer, I believe God can do it. So I need you to join me in prayer, wherever you may be. Remember, touch that body. If you need money, touch your wallet. As long as I have a cigarette, touch that pack of cigarettes. Touch whatever it is. Whatever it is, God can help you right now. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, how excellent is your name in heaven and in earth. Lord, you have power beyond measure. You can touch, you can heal, you can deliver. And you can set free. So we come to you tonight, Lord God, just as we are. We come to you, Lord God, because there's no strength on our own. There's no power on our own. But we solicit you even right now. We seek you. We seek your face before we seek your hand. We seek you, Lord God, because you, Lord God, can do everything and all things well. I pray, Lord God, first of all, for those in bereavement. That, Lord God, you will strengthen their heart. You say, blessed are those that mourn, they shall be comforted. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to bring comfort to Miss Eva, to bring comfort to Sister Lillian and their families right now on the passing of their loved ones. Truly, we know that you are able, Lord God. So we give them to you right now, just as they are, Lord. Strengthen them where they're weak. Pick them up where they're torn down. And now, Lord God, I take the opportunity to pray for those who are listening to my voice. Lord God, you know their conditions. You know their crisis. You know what they're going through. And Lord God, someone right now is calling out your name because they're struggling with their struggle. Someone is going through a trial, a tribulation. Someone is facing a mountain or, or valley, Lord God, that they need your help in. So right now, Lord, we beg you, we beseech you. We come to you right now to touch from the top of their head down to the sole of their feet. And whatever, Lord God, they're standing in the need of, we believe right now, we believe because we're walking by faith and not by sight, that it's done. Lord God, if it's, if it's 
cancer or COVID or cigarettes or alcohol or gambling, Lord God. Whatever it may be, Lord God, it could be uh, just our mind messed up, our heart, our backs, our stomach, our ears, our eyes, our feet, our legs, our back, whatever it is, Lord God, head trouble, mind, mind trouble, whatever it is, Lord God, we give it all to you, Lord God, because you say it. You are the Lord, thy God, that healeth thee. And then you said, by your stripes, we are healed. So, Lord, we speak it in the atmosphere that is done, Lord God. It's done. We speak it in existence. It is done, Lord God. We speak it over ourselves. It is done. So we love you. We thank you. And we honor you tonight. And we give you a name of praise and the glory. Thank you for the voices of victory, Lord God. These blessings and all need for blessing. We do ask in the wonderful, mighty, and precious name of Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Good night to all of you. Uh, somebody gave me this ugly hat. They gave me this ugly hat. Like I said, they gave me a, a nice hat on the front. Nice hat. I want to make sure y'all see it. It's a nice cap. Nice cap. It's a red emblem. Then on the back, he put, who that? Mess up a good thing. Mess up a good thing. So we praying for him too, okay? We praying for him. So good night. Y'all take care. See you next time.